Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. I am your host, Mongo Slade. Today, we're going to be discussing Triple H's comments about black representation in WWE, which caused a lot of headaches online as people did not like the answer that he gave. And to be quite honest, I think people are making too much of this, but then again, that's usually the case. But I did not fully listen to everything that he said. I saw a transcript, but in a world of fake quotes, we need to go directly to the source. So we're going to listen to Triple H's response. And then I'm going to give it a response of my own. So let's see what we got here from Triple H post bad blood. Um, And he's asked about, I guess, black representation. I'm sure that there are wrestlers that get opportunities that are deserved. I see everybody gets the opportunity. Like if, if I don't see the difference in anybody, I don't see the color. I don't see the nationality. I don't see any of it. I just see talent. I don't see the difference between men and women. I see talent. We tell stories with those talent, how they can handle that, those stories and how they can represent those stories and how we can bring those stories forward. So, um, you know, I, I don't, keep track of any of that i do what's relevant and what is best and the best in storytelling and what's being delivered the best and then that's what goes no different than you know the men and the women who main events whatever whatever the biggest stories are that's okay um all right so i don't like this answer not because of the i don't see color i only see talents i don't see gender i only see talent We'll get to that part. The second part is the part I really don't like. Is when he's talking about he's following the stories. Well, dude, who comes up with the stories? You come up with the stories. You have decided who's the story. And, you know, like, that's such a ridiculous response. When you're the storyteller, you can't be like, hey, I'm just going for the stories, pal. You know, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Because... People can't move up if you don't move them up. This is literally that kind of business. You know, um, it would be different if it was boxing or mixed martial arts or something like that. Then you could objectively say somebody is earned an opportunity and you're not giving it to them. And pro wrestling is completely and totally arbitrary. You know, you could push an Indian guy tomorrow, an Asian guy the next day, however you choose to do it. So let's let's do the argument about Triple H not seeing color, not seeing gender, only seeing talent. This is it's interesting as a response because you have to look at this thing and understand that during Triple H's tenure, which I guess How long has he had full control? About a year or so? If you want to say he's had full control, kind of, you know, if you want to count 2023 as him and Vince going back and forth until Vince finally got it fully yanked away from him um, by the lawsuit. There was a black WWE champion two years ago, Bobby Lashley, right? There haven't been any black world champions since. Everybody, I believe they was talking about this a couple of days ago. And Bobby Lashley was also the last black wrestler, male wrestler, that got a singles match at SummerSlam. And he wrestled Austin Theory, if I remember correctly. That was SummerSlam 2023. I saw somebody post this. That's how I know it. There's no way that I would remember that on my own. So, since Lashley is gone, MVP is gone, Sheldon Benjamin has gone... Your pool of black male talent has diminished to, on SmackDown anyway, Carmelo Hayes and the Street Profits. Now, we can't give Triple H too much credit for what's going on in NXT. But if you want to give NXT, you know, if you want to give him NXT as well, then this conversation shouldn't even be happening because you have Wesley, you've got Obafemi, 
and you've got a bunch of stuff going on. You know, Kalani Jordan, you got a bunch of stuff going on in NXT. So it, it wouldn't even be uh, Trick Williams. You wouldn't have any conversation at all if we're talking about NXT. NXT is the most diverse wrestling show in the business, and some people even say it's the worst, which is ironic considering so many of those people are also attacking Triple H for what he's saying. So we're going to limit our discussion to the main roster. On the main roster, there there was a Latino champion in Damian Priest. Um, he, re- he recently lost the belt, too, probably about two months ago. Other than that, there has been no black male main event, guys. And that is an issue. But when you look at the roster, you have to ask the question. And main roster black male talent has been essentially limited to Apollo Crews, the Street Profits, Carmelo Hayes, all of which are on SmackDown. Um, R-Truth, who is on Raw. And I think that's it. I think there's only five black male talent across the entire WWE main roster spectrum. Now, because this conversation has been building up, there's been a lot of conversation about how Latinos are treated and how Asians are treated. Well, if you look at the sheer numbers of Asian wrestlers, there's only outside of the women, of course, because there's three female Asians on the main roster. EO, Kyrie, Asuka. Asuka's injured right now. Um, and they're pretty well featured Asian males however are limited to Shinsuke Nakamura and Akira Tozawa and that's it if you and bring in NXT you've only got three because you got Dante Chin who's Singaporean I think so there's not a lot of Asian male wrestlers on the entirety of the WWE roster um, it's a little bit more for Asian females that's a, if you want to see that's a problem, that is a problem. Latinos, well, there was recently a Latino world champion in Damian Priest. Um, one of the top stars on Monday Night Raw is Dominic Mysterio. He's Latino. Um, of course, Rey Mysterio is always considered a top star, even if he's not wrestling a lot and not featured often. So the Latino issue would be female in so much as there's not a lot of female Latinos. There's really just Raquel and Zelina. Now, if you add NXT, of course, then there's Lola Vice. Okay, so um, there might be another female Latina that I'm not thinking of right now. Oh, yeah, Electra Lopez. Um, oh, yeah, so that also includes uh, Santos Escobar and the rest of those guys. So there's quite a few Latinos on, in Andrade. Quite a few Latinos in WWE across all three brands. But there was recently a Latino world champion, but nobody's talking about them. But people have a problem with the way the Latinos are used in terms of, you know, the LWO and stuff like that. Going back to the black male issue. You don't want to create a token, which is essentially. I don't want to say that's what AEW has done, but that's pretty much what it is. You know, for years, AEW was destroyed for not having any black wrestlers in the main event scene, no black world champion. And then Swerve came along and they made him world champion for four months. And all of a sudden, their race issue was fixed. Forget the fact that Willie Hobbs has been sitting on the bench for months, not doing anything. And, you know, guys like Leo Rush and Private Party and, you know, uh, the the. The Martin boys, uh, Top Flight, they weren't doing anything forever. Just forget all that. It was Swerve. Swerve solved the race problem in AEW. Well, again, Lashley was world champion two or three years ago in WWE. So can they move away from black guys in the main event for a short amount of time, even though it was one specific black guy, and not have a race problem? Now, some people will say there's always been a race problem. There will always be a race problem. Okay, those people, you can't really discuss this issue with them anyway because they find racism in oatmeal and racism in, in, you know, bananas and shit. So you can't really have conversations 
real conversations with these people anyway. But normal folks, I guess you could argue there's not enough black male talent, especially singles black male talent. And that needs to change. And there is not enough uh, Latinas that you could change that almost overnight. There's not enough Asians, Asian males. All that stuff can be work work around. And you can, because these people are independent contractors and they're not employees and it costs you nothing, it, you could say, you could solve those problems pretty easily, you know, and it could be additive without being subtractive. You can bring over Asian talent or bring in Latinas or bring in black guys and it won't cost you anything more and you don't have to take anything from anybody. You don't have to fire anybody. You don't have to not use any of the talent you already use it. The only problem is you still only got a certain number of hours on television. And if you want to dedicate time to people that the fans want to see, how much of that time do you limit to give that time to other performers? Now, the one of the cop-out answers I've seen is that People think Triple H is right and that he should not see color. He should only see talent. And then it's the other side where if you don't see color, you don't see the black experience. You don't see the experiences of blah, 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 which is, of course, the woke nonsense. What I don't want, I don't want tokens. OK, I don't want somebody who's just in the spot because the company got into some race troubles. And now all of a sudden we got to push random guy. And this is most notably for people who want, okay, we just push Carmelo Hayes. Don't turn him into a token. All right. Don't just say, oh, all of a sudden Carmelo Hayes is going to be the United States champion now because the company has a race problem. Don't do that. I, I forgot to mention this. I'm mentioning it now. Jinder Mahal also came out recently and he talked about in 2021 there were 10 Indian uh, wrestlers under on the roster. And today there's only one. And that's an interesting thing too. It's an interesting conversation to have. So just add that into the rest of the conversations that we're having here. But it's hard to argue um, from a racism perspective. And this was mentioned by Dave Shearer of PW Insider. It's hard to argue race issues when you just had a pay-per-view in which three of the wrestlers in the main event were brown people roman solo and jacob fatu you know it's very difficult to make that argument when the top act in the business is a brown man and beginning roman reigns it's very hard to make it a racial conversation now, Roman is mixed. And I think they all are. But you're going to have this conversation about people being mixed. I mean, it's just a pointless conversation, okay? But these people are brown. These are adult males who are the most over, some of the most merchandise, they get the most TV time, and they're non-white. Now, while a white male being Cody Rhodes is the world champion and another white male, Gunter, is the world champion, the, there's a lot of TV time given to non-white males. They just happen to be Samoans. Jay Uso gets a lot of TV time. Dominic Mysterio gets a lot of TV time. Damian Priest gets a lot of TV time. Um, Andrade and Carmelo Hayes, they, they work a lot in the ring. You don't see a lot of their character stuff, but that is an issue. So I think it all boils down to this. Triple H can't afford to make decisions based off color. He can't afford to make decisions based off gender. He's in a seat where doing that is a big issue. It's a big problem. We can look at how some of these people have fallen off of a cliff due to Triple H because he made the decision to let Lashley MVP and Shelton Benjamin go. He made the decision to move Bianca Belair, who was a superstar babyface and top female act to move her to the tag team division and then she's not featured on pay-per-view. He made that decision. 
We can criticize him for those decisions. But we all can also say, you know, Bianca Belair was getting pushed for two or three years solid. You know, then we decided, okay, we're going to go in a different direction. You know? Or we're going to, you know, move on and give this person a chance. But when the person you give a chance is Bailey, who is Mexican, by the way, so she's a Latina. Um, well, she's a Mexican descent. But there's this issue with Bailey has already been there and has been there for a long time. And so if you're going to replace Bianca with somebody who's, you know, somebody different, somebody new, Bailey wouldn't be the right option. Nia Jax, who is not white, she's brown. You know, she's Samoan. She's not, you know, she's been there forever, too. So did you really just replace Bianca with also Rans? You know, not to disrespect them or anything like that, but that's pretty much what you did. You considered that she was super pushed and she's been pushed for too long. So we're going to move her to the side. But you moved her to the side to bring in people who've been doing this longer than she has. And on the male side. Okay, we gave Bobby Lashley his big push. You know, maybe we don't want to re-sign him for the money that he wants or whatever the case may be, but you have no replacement. So it's just a big gaping hole in your main event scene for black talent. And you're saying, hey, we're going to put Carmelo Hayes there, but we can't rush it. And then some people are going to say, well, he's a token. He's the one black guy on the roster that everybody sees getting pushed, but he's not there yet. And he's only been on the main roster about a year or so. And then on Raw, there is none. There's just our truth who's comedy. There aren't any black male talent. I was like, okay, I guess the New Day, you know. Do they really count? <laughs> so there's guys who've been there forever to the point where they blend into the wallpaper. And New Day is just one of those guys, right? So there's three black male talent on, on Raw. <laughs> So there's a conversation to be had about this, but he's in a position where he can't make those decisions. He can't decide it's, uh, it's time to push an Asian guy. So we're going to put Shinsuke Nakamura on top. Oh, it's time to push an Indian guy. Oh, it's time to push this guy or that guy and make these decisions based off race. He can't do that. He's not in a position that the media journalist class are in where they're out here counting hits. He can't do that. He has to look at what the outcomes are. He has to see if these people are catching on, if they're making money, if they're selling t-shirts, if the crowd is caring about them and then make those decisions. He can make the decision to give them that opportunity to give them that spot. But ultimately he cannot afford to make decisions based off race or, or gender to a degree. Now, I know that those, the, the journalist class and those people don't like that. They want immediate responses right now. But Triple H is not in a position to make those decisions. And he should just say that. He should say, like, I'm not going to tell people. I Even though you're over, even though people are behind you, we're not going to push you because you're white. We're not going to push you because we got enough Samoans in the main event. We're not going to push you because we got enough Latinos. Like, how would that sound? Is that better to your ear than there just not being enough black people there? That, okay, we're going to push, I don't know, uh, Apollo Crews as a top star right now because we need a black guy. So even though the story is there with, you know, Cody and Kevin Owens or Cody and Randy Orton or anybody else, we're going to force feed Apollo Crews because we got to have a black guy in that position. Does that does that sound better to the people asking these questions? Because it doesn't sound better to me. It might be great for Apollo Crews. He finally like shit. I can finally get a chance. But is that the real reason you want to be there? Now the mass exodus of black guys from WWE is an interesting question because. <laughs> You have about four or five black dudes leave since Triple H took over. You know, again, MVP, Sheldon Benjamin, Ricochet, and Lashley. And they were f heavily featured black guys, too. Ricochet was almost always featured. Lashley was always featured. MVP was with Lashley, so that worked. 
So it's certainly a problem that needs to be fixed, but he cannot come out and tell you that he's going to limit other people's decisions based off race. He can't do that. There's no, there is a no win answer to this question. He can't tell you he's going to limit other people's opportunities based off race and gender just to appease people who don't have to make these decisions. So this is the best answer he could give. But they can fix the problem. They can look at the situation and say, okay, there's not enough Asians, Indians, Latinas, etc. How do we add to this roster? How do we make more of these stars of this to make it more diverse? Because wrestling is a place where you can do that. Granted, they get over, of course. We're not talking about Smash and Angel Garza over into the main event just because we got to have a Latino guy, which is what some people want. That doesn't make sense. It's going to kill your business. It's bad business decision. It might be good for public relations, but it's bad business. Triple H is in the, is trying at the very least to do good business. And good business means you take your time and you develop these stars slowly. Eventually you get, you know, an Obafemi in the main event, hopefully, or Trick Williams or somebody like that. Unfortunately, I don't see the, the <laughs> I see a ceiling for Trick Williams due to his not strong in-ring work and Triple H preferring that over character, charisma, personality, etc. But we got Obafemi, who is undeniable. He's great in the ring, great on the mic, swag, aura, character, got everything. We're just waiting for him to blossom. But there should be more. And I don't think there is a problem with saying that there should be more. There is a problem, however, with saying that he should be making these decisions based off race and gender. Because he can't do that. That sends the 100% the wrong vibe to the locker room. Telling them that we're going to limit other people's decisions based off race. Because we got asked a race question at the Bad Blood. That's just nonsense. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll talk to you later. No one does it better.